In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning, Jah created the heaven and the earth. Then created man of his own likeness and image. He gave unto man wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. is my help and my strength, so shall I feel. He's a shield upon my right and my left hand, so whom shall I be? Jai is my king. is my light and my salvation so who shall I fear he's my guide throughout this creation so who shall I be afraid Jai is my key is my guide in my resting and my rising so who shall I fear he's my guide when I step out and forward in so who shall I be afraid Jia is my king is my guide when the Philistines come down upon me. So who shall I be? He's my guide when my enemies come to devour me. So who shall I be afraid? Jai is my So who shall I fear? He's my guide from the vampire of him. So who shall I afraid? Jah is my king.
and see for the afternoon in this tribute to our brother Mikey Chung. Uh, indeed, it is a sad day that Mikey has passed, but it is joy in our heart because of the contributions that he has made to music and the upliftment and joy in people's heart to the four corners of the world. Mikey was born in Christiana, Jamaica, 1950, and grew up on Tuaru Crescent in Kingston. He later moved with his family to Vineyard Town, uh, where we would know, most of us would know him from. He attended St. George's College. He began his career in music as a guitarist for the Mighty Mystics, other groups such as the Virtues in 67 to 69, and there may be other groups that I may not mention here, and you can all refer to them. To them. But Generation Gap, where at, with Generation Gap, he played as a, the house band at Federal Studios. He played with the Now Generation Band before playing with artists such as Jacob Miller and Inner Circle in the 70s. As a member of Word, Sound, and Power from 1978, along with Sly and Robbie, he backed Peter Tosh on Mystic Man, Wanted, Dread, and Alive, and Bush Doctor. Playing guitar and synthesizer, he played with Lee Perry for Lee Perry, band the upsetters and he was part of that group of musicians at compass point all stars island records which of course is in the bahamas he often accompanied sly and robbie shakespeare on their recordings and played guitar for black uhuru on albums such as anthem red and chill out he worked with many Jamaican and international artists, including Maxi Priest, Grace Jones, the Rolling Stones, Serge Gainsbourg, Betty Midler, Big Mountain, Art Ensemble of Chicago, James Brown, Garnet Silk, Joe Cocker, Sinead O'Connor, and many, many more. Chung was the brother of keyboardist, producer Jeffrey Chung, and had one daughter. Uh, he died from myeloma in Kingston on the 28th of December, 2021, at the age of 71. And today, we are here to pay tribute to our brother, Mikey Chung. At this time, we have a video presentation of prayer from Martin Lage Sinclair, a friend. Can we roll that and run that video, please? All right. Brothers and sisters, um, you know, we come together at this time not to mourn, but to celebrate the life of our beloved brother, um, affectionately known uh, Mikey Chung, affectionately known as Billy, just plain Mikey Chung or Mao. Um, Mikey had had very strong. Mikey and myself, we have very strong Christian beliefs, and we will talk about it. So right at this time, but we also have very healthy respect for those who believe differently from us so at this time we come together to say a prayer so bear with us and join us as we say a prayer um among uh, as a christian among other things we believe that this this is not all there is to life itself there's another side and so we believe that mike chung has transitioned from this side to the other side. Therefore, that is merely a transition from here and as believers to a permanent presence um, in the presence of God. That's what we believe. So we believe that we shall see other believers again. 
And so we can take some consolation in that. Um, so please join me in a prayer of praise and thanksgiving for the life of our brother, Michael Chung, at this time. Please bow with me. Um, Heavenly Father, we bow before you, creator and sovereign ruler of this universe, with worship, praise, and thanksgiving. We thank you for all you have done, and especially for all the blessings to come. We especially thank you at this time for the life of our beloved brother, Mikey Anthony Chung, who is in your presence now. So as the natural feeling of grieving will attend us from time to time, we still celebrate his life and time and the time that you gave him with us the goodness and benefits we received because he was here um, we we are at he, 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 um, he was very aware that you are the source of his talents and he gave thanks and um, and he performed, his, 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 he lived the life in such a way that, he, that it was an example. We could follow his example in thanksgiving and performance. And he encouraged us to do the same. May his soul rest and abide in your presence forevermore. I still, I pray you will continue to comfort us when we grieve and even as we celebrate the life of our beloved brother, Mikey. Antony Chung. We ask you to hear this prayer and let this prayer come on to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Right. So we thank our brother Martin and um, like our brother says, you know, Mikey was a Christian and wherever one wants to, to worship or do, um, God loves all his people. However, I know what he's speaking about and I want to really use this opportunity without apology to say that, that His Majesty Haile Selassie was indeed a Christian king. He says a man's life without Christ is like a rudderless ship and when it comes up on the torrents of life, it will be smashed into small pieces. So, we are all one God's people. At this time, uh, our feature is Mao at play, Mikey Chung at play, snippets of Mikey playing, slide pictures and videos, both with audio. And um, can we please run that video, please? Just that you 
Canary Tree
That's indeed some of um, the, the music that Mikey played on. And amazing, you know, that it's in reggae month. Now that we celebrate um, a music that's going to the four corners of the world, spreading hope, the vibes of peace between people of all race, all class, all color, all creed, and all religion. And Mikey, indeed, played a great and significant part in, in that all over the world. And um, we're now going to have a few of the tributes by video, and then we will go to our musical tribute with our group of musicians here. Um, as soon as you're ready over there, sir. Okay. okay. Yeah, they're getting ready with that. Um, but just to let you know that Mikey did collaboration. Hi, this is Barry Biggs. Right now, I'm paying tribute to my friend Mikey Mochong. My heart is really heavy at the moment because, you know, we've been friends since the 19, early 70s. I was friends, I was best friends with his brother, Jeffrey, who passed away many years ago. And then me and Mikey became even closer. You know, Ma Mikey played guitar on most of my tracks, most of my songs. I mean... I don't know what to say, you know, if, if it's, my heart is actually bleeding right now. We used to have a lot of fun. Our thing was, you know, we used to go to a lot of restaurants and eat food. That was our thing. So I'm going to miss Mikey for that part as well, you know. So, Mikey, my friend, I want you to rest in peace. You know, because... Because I know the old music fraternity is missing you. And this song I'm about to dedicate for you is a song that you worked on for me a couple of years ago. And I think this was the last song that you ever played on for me. So Mikey, my brother, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. This song is for you, Mikey. May the good Lord bless and keep you Where the need of fire Golden days today May your troubles all be small ones And your fortunes ten times ten May the good Lord bless and keep you Till we meet again May you Sunlight shining and a bluebird in every tree. May there be a silver lining back a fair brick cloud you see. Fill your dreams of sweet tomorrows. Never mind what might happen. May the good Lord bless and keep you till we meet again. May you walk with sunlight shining and a bluebird in every tree. May there be a silver lining 
Like a fairy cloud you see Fill your dreams of sweet tomorrows Never mind what might happen May the good Lord bless and keep you Till we meet again May the good Lord bless and keep you Till we meet again And may the good Lord bless and keep you Till we meet again May the good Lord Bass, but I'm a guitar player. I was Mikey Chung's friend. Mikey recorded this beautiful song with his good friend Barry Biggs. I'd like to play it in his memory now. And while my guitar gently weeps. <laughs> First word that comes to my mind when I think about Mikey Chung is humility. Very humble human being. Kind, loving, caring kind of person, you know. Um, Mikey was always willing to help as long as he can, you know. Um, when he first started working with Mikey Chung, because we actually worked with him, he never worked with us, you know. Um, in 75, 76, uh, you know, our first recording was Stop Children, you know, and he was there with us from then, you know, um, helping us through all our battles, you know, and as the battles, um, help us to get the music out, to help us to show that, um, but with the promotion, give us um, ideas, give us um, encouragement and all the things that we needed, you know, to put the song out, because then we're doing our own recordings. Um, he was the man behind everything that we did. You know, I remember the first time we met him, you know, it was on his veranda at Antrim Road, and um, I was to be believed to be, to be honest, I was a little, in the oven because you only see him on TV or in the newspaper. I, you know, I've never met him before, so you know I was very quiet. But as I grew to know know him, I realized that he was a very nice person, kind person. You know, does is not very condescending at all. And he was, if he feels something, he's gonna tell you, negative or positive, he's gonna tell you how he feels. You know, he's that kind of person. But you know, he was very shy too. To a certain extent, shy, you know, not one of those people, <laughs> which is weird. He, he's in the limelight, but you get the impression that he never wanted to be the limelight. He just wanted to be a guitarist, just to be good and play what he does, but doesn't want that light on him. That's the kind of person he was, you know. And I declare that I love Mikey Chunk, you know. 
come on, so boy, you know, me no love no man. I love Mikey Chung. He was very good to us, you know, and I really appreciate it. And I really want to thank him for all he has done for Home T4. You know, I want to give my blessings and my support to his family in this time of bereavement. Mikey Mo Chung, may his soul rest in peace. Love you, man. My name is Trevor Thompson. Most people call me Sparrow. Good day to all family and friends. Mikey, Billy, Pa Chong, Mao. Today is a very sad day for me and many others. I met Mikey when I was 13 years old. He was a drummer for a band called the Mighty Mystics that consisted of Kingston College and St. George's College Schoolboys. One Saturday evening, I was invited to a rehearsal by the bass player, Paul Luyen, who knew I was learning the drums from seeing me in the cadet band at our school, Kingston College. He wanted to hear me play. The band was practicing a jazz song called A Taste of Honey. The song had a syncopated break with a drum fill. Every time the band got to that part, Mikey would stop, unable to play the phrase. After the third attempt, Paul asked me if I was willing to try playing the song. I was able to play the song without a hitch. I had a very good teacher, George Ducky Bailey from 1GR Band, God rest his soul. Paul turned to Mikey and said, Mikey, I think you should let Sparrow play the drums. I was a little sad for Mikey. However, Mikey just shrugged his shoulders with a smile and said, okay. Within approximately three weeks, Mikey came back playing the guitar. It was like a miracle. Mikey was now one of the guitarists for the schoolboy band, the Mighty Mystics. We performed at nightclubs and most high school end of term concerts in Kingston, backing a lot of singers, performing on JBC TV show, playing on an playing on an independence float back in Desmond Decker and the Aces. This was the start of Mikey's musical career as one of Jamaica's best guitarists. Mikey was a very courageous human being who did not give up very easily. He would not complain, but would rather take things in stride and move, and move along. He was very humble and would not let success get to his head. However, he was not afraid to speak his mind. The Mighty Mystic was the first backing band for Sing Out Jamaica Up With People. The band left Sing Out and went on to play at the famous Victoria Pier by the waterfront at King Street in downtown Kingston. On the second floor, there was a nightclub, the same Victoria Pier that is now reopened as a restaurant. This was 1965. The legendary Tom McCook and the Supersonics would perform on Saturday evenings. Mr. McCook would allow us, the schoolboy band, to play in between his set. God rest his soul. He liked the band very much that he would allow us to play at Beaumont Club on Sunday nights when his band, the Supersonics, were playing. One Saturday evening after the gig, at Victoria Pier, a few of us were in the manager's car that was driven by Keith Rowe from Keith and Tex. We all were young boys. Driving up King Street, we were stopped by the police. He thought that Mikey was being kidnapped as he was the only Chinese in the car. That was a big laugh for us as young boys. Playing music in Jamaica was very exciting. We had lots of funny moments. I can remember one night after a gig, we were standing outside after backing Roy Shirley, God rest his soul. He turned to Mikey and said, Mr. Chin, mind you catch a cold. You just finished playing the hot guitar. Mikey couldn't stop laughing without a sound, of course. You notice he called him Mr. Chin instead of Mr. Chung. 
Mikey was determined to play in the band. His dad, Mr. Chung, God rest his soul, did not approve of Mikey playing music and not getting paid. After every gig, we would think that Mikey was not going to return for the next gig. Every time we'd go to, to get Mikey, Mr. Chung would say, Mikey, nah go. No money, nah go. Somehow Mikey would, would be at the gig. His perseverance would pay off. After the Mighty Me Six broke up, we both joined the Virtuous Band along with Val Douglas. This was around 1966-67. Rupi Edwards, Bob Andy, God rest his soul, Ernie Smith was in that band. I remember one Saturday night the band played in Oturus. After the gig, it was around 2 a.m. on the morning. We, we both had school. Rupi Edwards was a driver. But he was unable to drive. So was Bob Andy. God rest his soul. We were stuck on the road in Ocho Rios. I turned to Mikey and said, Mikey, how are we going to get back to Kingston? He just turned to me calmly and shrugged his shoulders with a smile and said, Me no know. We both started laughing. Mikey was very easygoing. Nothing bothered him. The virtu Virtuous Band at a rehearsal spot. This was where Madden's funeral home would park his hearse. We would rehearse in the front of the garage and the hearse would be parked in the back with a partition. One night we were rehearsing and a loud noise came from where the hearse was parked. Sounded like something fell. We all ran out except for Mikey. He just stood there laughing. I left the Virtues to play with a few different groups in Jamaica. In June 1969, I left Jamaica to play on a cruise ship. I came back to Jamaica February 1960 Mikey playing music and not getting paid. After every gig, we would think that Mikey was not going to return for the next gig. Every time we'd go to, to get Mikey, Mr. Chung would say, Mikey, nah go. No money, nah go. Somehow Mikey would, would be at the gig. His perseverance would pay off. After the Mighty Me Six broke up, we both joined the Virtuous Band along with Val Douglas. This was around 1966-67. Rupi Edwards, Bob Andy, God rest his soul, Ernie Smith was in that band. I remember one Saturday night the band played in Ocherus. After the gig, it was around 2 a.m. on the morning. We, we both had school. Rupi Edwards was a driver, but he was unable to drive. So was Bob Andy. God rest his soul. We were stuck on the road in Ocho Rios. I turned to Mikey and said, Mikey, how are we going to get back to Kingston? He just turned to me calmly and shrugged his shoulders with a smile and said, Me no know. We both started laughing. The virtual I met Mike Star This is an expression of thanks for being my friend throughout the past 50 years. That. Hmm? No money. No go. <laughs> yes, indeed. It was me, no boy, I said, no money, just yes, no indeed. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to continue with our tribute. And um, we have with us here uh, musicians who have played with Mike yet sometime or another. Yeah. Okay. 
so um, I see Robbie. Robbie Lane is getting his keyboard together. Yes. We have Dry Pinkney and Gizmo. Yeah. Is that Derek over there on the drums? Yeah. Okay. And um, who's on the other keyboard over there? Is that Bubbler? Franklin Bubbler Wall. Give him a round of applause. We have the man on the bass, a real sweet bass. He's even got muscles on the baritone, Mr. Lloyd Parks. Yeah. And then, Robbie, we have. Um, oh, okay. So we have. Oh, we have Scotty, Dean. Yeah. Dean Fraser on saxophone. We have Scotty there on trumpet. Uh, Barry on trombone. And Okeen. Okeeli. Yeah. On trumpet. Yes. Let's give him a round of applause. We'll be joined by other musicians shortly. Yeah, we did that. He's the first one. You know, Dwight. Yeah, man. O original Zappo. And, um, hey. and so we're going to ask the musicians to open up with a number for us all right as soon as they're ready are we ready give them a round of applause everybody this is the mikey chong tribute band
Yes, indeed. Mikey Chung, tribute band, one more time. A real nice round of applause, everybody. Yes, and we continue the tribute. When I call your name, a song called Bangarang. It shall be rough and tough. Let's welcome none other than Stranger Cole. because I'm getting very old. Yes, this celebration this year is the 60th anniversary. Yeah! Now you hear this. Who are you that I should be mindful of? You ran for refuge and were rescued. That's a fact. Then why lie and try to buy the answer seed? For the good you do lives after you. No, yes, you could puff, puff and puff and tear your butt. It shall be rough, rough and tough. On your side, whoa, so stop the lie. Don't try to bite the hands that feed you. For the good you do lives after you. How you feeling? Man Stranger Cole said 1962. Yeah? Amazing, eh? One more time. Let's give it up for Stranger. <laughs> right now, here's a, a brother, or not sure if the group is here, but the, yes, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Brothers who have worked closely with my group in the okay. past. As a matter of fact, one time. A member of this group was a member of the Jamaicans, and um, you know, uh, 
They had songs such as Hard to Confess, That's Life, and of course, Baltimore. Let's welcome the Tamlins. Yeah. One, two. Shoot it, do yeah. Big up, man. Go away, baby. Cause I know you ain't really? singing. You let me see ya. And you won't let me be. Now my heart will be open. Fill me down until you. I try to touch her. And I get it her again. Lydia. Yeah, man. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. 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 Big up to Mikey. Family. Yeah, man. Mikey was our best friend. Great guy, nice guy. He was my first roommate on tour. Robbie Lynn, Sly, Robbie, and Juna. Robbie, tell you, Mikey is a real, real nice brother. He has this laugh, you know. Mikey first took me to a Chinese restaurant in England, introduced Duck Wing to me, trust me. <laughs> yes, and he was teaching me how to use a chopstick. Imagine that. I was eating kind of fast, but I tell you, Mikey, great, great friend, you know. And like the said, nothing never bother Mikey. <laughs> nothing. Nothing not bother man. Nice guy, man. Yeah. May he soul rest in peace, you know. Yeah, man. Yeah. 
Mikey, rest in peace, my brother. Big up, buddy. Yeah, man. Fraser, the original player, saxophone, and it's recording. And we also have Sly, don't bow inside. Sly, pick up yourself. And the great Robbie Lynn, original. It's a pleasure, you know. It's for our friend Mikey. I'm the great Dean Fraser. Great Dean. Kiana. Musician on a song, good. No a hero. <laughs> Wicked. Wicked, Wicked Dean. Wicked. And of course, Joey over there. Yeah, Light Park and Petrin. And of course, Pobla. Yeah, man. This for Mikey. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we give thanks, man. Yeah, man. We give thanks. Oh, Peter Mike. It's good to be here. Mikey Boo, man. We're gonna miss Mikey. Mikey Moo. Trust me. Yeah, man. Hey, hey, hey. See the little 
seeker Smith, the Tamlins, let's give him another real nice round of applause. Yes, yes, yes. And here comes a brother. I would want to say this brother actually brought me into the music business um, from the days back of the Merry Coles. Um, man, we had a song called Waited So Long. Yeah. Then he had songs such we know we did Baba Boom, we did Things You Say You Love, and then he had songs such as Life's Rocky Road, The Way It Is. When you can't find him on his farm in St. Elizabeth, he's still performing in China. They once called him Ricky Storm, but the world know him as Ai Kong. Let's put our hands together for Ai Kong. On bass to join Ai Kong is 
none other than Glenn Browning. Let's give it up. A mic for Mr. Icon, please. Where's the mic for Mr. Kong, please? Yo. Blessings. Yes. Them top out. Hold on there. Hold on there. Hold on there. Them top out. We are celebrate the passing of Mikey. Well, Mikey die here every day with I and I see him here. Him spirit never die. This man, I had the pleasure to work with him when I did my first album in 1978. At dynamic sounds the way it is the album mikey and his brother jeffrey blessed memory yeah man rastafari Some 
kind of little funky business going on right now here. Ow! That's the way it is. That's the way. Bless the dog. Yes. Mikey or uh, Billy, anyone here who I give him as a said man. You know, this one you played on the album, you played the guitar, and your brother also played the pick guitar. So, to you and Jeffrey, this is simply called Life's Road. Dean Fraser also played one of the first songs, <laughs> but not in the years, too. Yeah. Blessed love, my brother. One heart. Yeah. Thank you. An amazing piece of history. Mm -hmm. Ricky Storm, I Kong. One more time. Let's bless the brother with a round of applause. Right now, I'd like to 
call on our wonderful sister. Yeah. And um, she she's going to come and, and do her tribute to Mikey. We know of that great song called Book of, of Life. And I'd like to invite our sister, Pam Hall. Let's welcome her. And this is my shoes. A victim of lockdown. I have, you mean I'm gonna have to buy a pair of new shoes? Because <laughs> this is not the first. <laughs> what we do? Yeah, you want a good look? No, I'll show you the camera. <laughs> Yes, Chris has, I, I was talking about the idea, but I'll, I'll just stay one place. <laughs> yeah. See. Can you please welcome my good friend, Chris McDonald. Thank you all. Um, the song Book of Life, I did that song with Orville Wood, R.I.P. Woody in my very early days and um, Mikey and Jeffrey I used to hang out with them because I used to work at the cleaner and so that was very near Vineyard Town but also hanging with them in Vineyard Town reminded me of when I used to live in Vineyard Town as a child so there are a lot of memories triggered by that song you know, so I'd, I'd just like to bless up the Chong family. Mikey Chong, Jeffrey Chong, and Woody, all of whom have passed on. Still love them. Love the whole one or two. Thank you, Chris. Welcome.
much more for us to see So much more, yeah Love There is much more than vanity Let's say it again one more time Love Love There is so much more for us to see It's time that we look into the book of life We see that there's more than vanity It's time that we look into the book of life I said we see that there's more than vanity It's time that we look into the book of life into the book of life. Are ready for this? It's time that we look into the book of life. We see. It's time that we look into the book of life. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes. Uh, Pam Hall joined by Chris McDonald. And that's wonderful. My goodness. Woody would be feeling proud. Thank you so much. Right now, wonderful group. And um, we have our brother... Leroy Palmer and Orville Bagger Case to come up and represent renowned reggae group Home Tea. Let's let them feel welcomed. Mm. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, yeah. The song we're about to sing is a song that was produced by Mikey. And he played on it and everything. And uh, did he sing on it, Palmer? Did he sing it? No? Yeah. Did he sing on the show? No, it's not children. O okay, this is dedication. Say hello to my former bosses, Mrs. and Mr. Cowan. Okay. Oh, you do. <laughs> yes, and we just want to say... Um, um, this is dedication written by B.B. Seaton, early in our careers. B.B. Seaton and Bagger Case. <laughs> Take your credit. <laughs> dedication, that's what it takes. Education, if you want a party with a time, whoa, a conscious mind, shame. Yeah, yeah. So much to do. And if your wish must come true, can't wait. No time, no. You've got to make up your mind what you're going to do. Whoa, do. Oh, my people. But one loving one another Sending more time Than teaching each other The slide Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
conscious life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Now if your wish must come to can't waste no time, no. You've got to make up your mind what you're going to You know, Mikey was so special to us. He taught us everything we knew and everything we know. Uh -huh. Okay. At this particular time, we'd like to dedicate the solo, this solo here to Mikey, played by Gizmo. Come in. Love. Can't waste no time. No. You've got to make up your mind what you're going to do. Yes, home tea. And I tell you, uh, we have some readings and stuff, so we're going to, in this um, side here of the tribute, you know, um, Miss Brenda was very close to our family, and um, she used to like her thing called Jean Nate, I think, that body lotion years ago. She was... Uh, our dressmaker and everything and um, and uh, we're gonna just do one family tribute to Mikey from my family to the Chung's family gentlemen with a microphone Where's the gentleman with the microphones? Yes, sir, please stand by. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Ibu Cooper, it's good to see you in the place. Beautiful. 
And Mr. Mickey Hansen, it's nice to have you, sir. Wonderful. Yes. One. All right, are we ready? From our family to the Chung's family. Yes. Carleen Cowan today. You and I must share the silence, finding comfort together the way old friends do. And after fights and words of violence, we make up with each other the way old friends do. Times of joy and times of sorrow. I don't care what comes tomorrow. We can face it together, though your friends do. La 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 la. together just the way old friends do all. but after fights and words of violence we make up with each other the way old friends will just lift your hands and do this come on times of joy and times of sorrow Don't care what comes tomorrow. I know that we can face it together. The way old friends. La 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 la. Do woo 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 And God bless. 
bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. Together, forever, together. Thank you. Together, forever, together. Yes. Let's give it up for Colleen. Thank you so much. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. And uh, at this point in the tribute time, uh, is Mr. Ibu Cooper close by? Oh, Mr. Mr. Ibu Cooper. Right. Oh, here he comes. Mr. Cooper would like to make his tribute to our brother Mikey Chung. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Robbie, give thanks. DM, give thanks. Ban, give thanks. Man, them sound good. I'll sing as Pam, long time in a seal. And if you never load, if you never load up the shoes, I'll never know. I look like the slippers. <laughs> you see me? Brothers and sisters, we know that there were concentrations of musicians in Kingston contributing to the development of this music, especially in the Coxon and Duke Reed Studios. However, many of those musicians were from the rural areas. And so why I'm here today is because there's a lady who I used to call Auntie Brenda, and even some of our younger sons used to wonder why I call her Auntie Brenda. Well, Mikey's mother was very good friends with my mother and the lady who teach me music, my auntie. They're all from Clarendon and Manchester. We're going to talk later because your brother married to my cousin too. I sure you never know. <laughs> I know your cousin married to my cousin. But it's small, it's small, it's small. And so I attended Knox College and right when I was taking common entrance, these two Chinese boys came to the first farm of Knox, Billy Chung and his brother. And of course they stood out because they were like full Chinese in a school like that with Jamaican people. They went off to Kingston after that, I think to St. George's. And so I never saw them again until we're in inner circle band, just when we go Yui. And when we go Yui, an inner circle band started. There was a saxophonist by the name of Douglas Guthrie. And Guthrie is from Vineyard Town. So Guthrie was brought to inner circle by Jeff Chung. And I also used to see Jeff singing in the Peter Ashburn affair. So Guthrie and Jeff came in. And I used to play for the Catholic Church, Aquinas Center. And that is where I met a bass player called Val Douglas, who actually asked me to be the keyboardist for no, no Gen, actually. But I had already been the keyboardist in the inner circle, so I'm going to get booked out already. <laughs> However, it never stopped us from being very good friends. And we did a lot of sessions together at Harry J Studio. Yeah? Um, people like Joe Isaacs and all them people yeah. And Mikey Chong wasn't as close to me as Jeff. However, one could not help but notice Mikey and admire, as everybody said before, and you will hear more of later, his patience, his musicianship, and as them say, him no make nothing worry him. So it go. Mikey moved on to the Peter Tosh ensemble sometime later and Jeff was producing an album for Third World Jeff did about two albums with Third World and we come back to New York and go to Soundtrack Studio and Mikey had been on an exercise program and some cleansing fast Mikey lost a lot of weight and you wouldn't believe this me and Jeff walked past Mikey and Jeff and I recognized him brother 
<laughs> so he's with him turn around and say, Jeff, wait, Mikey, <laughs> you that. Yeah, that was one of the profound moments that I remember with Mikey Chung. Mikey Chung, however, many of you might not know, when Maurice Gordon left Edna Manley College, the next guitar teacher was actually Mikey Chung. Many of you might not know that. He was a guitar teacher at Edna Manley for quite a while. So I bring greetings, condolence, and best wishes personally from the Jamaica Reggae Industry Association and from a friend of my mother's family from forever. Jeff and me did well tight, okay? And by extension, the Chung family and Trim Days. People, we have not lost, is what it said, I come. We have not lost a brother. The Almighty lent him to us for a time. He did great service on this planet through his music and his personality. Let us use his life as an example of how we should live the rest of our days. Blessed love. Thank you, Ibu. And um, the Jamaica Reggae Association. Much respect in Reggae Month when Ibu spoke a while ago and he said that two Chinese brothers. I thought he was talking about Victor and Sonny Wang. <laughs> you, know? you know what I mean, Herbie? Because one time, you know, the um, Trini guy um, said to me, you know, um, Dean, is that, boy, but in Jamaica, the Chinese control the business. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, you man, only Chinese. All you hear about is Bonnie Lee, Neville Lee, Byron Lee, and Bob Marley. <laughs> Hey, help me, Jesus. Right now, we'll have a reading from Nicole McDonald. Is Nicole here? Oh, here comes Nicole. Give her a round of applause, please. She's a friend of the family and of Mikey. Um, microphone, gentlemen, can I have the microphone, please? He's coming with your microphone. Here. I'm just reading a short scripture for him, and then I say a poem. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in thee. Therefore, I shall not slide. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me, and try my reign and my heart. For thy loving kindness is before thine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. I have not sat with a vain person, neither will I sit with dissemblers. I ate the the congregation of evildoers, I will not sit, sit with a wicked person. I will wash my hand in innocency. I will compass thine altar. Seven where I stop, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wonders work. That is the portion of God's words. Mr. Chung, a boss, a father, a grandfather, a golden heart stop beating, a hard working and at rest. It's break our hearts to see you go, but God only take the best. They say that memories are for a golden age. Well, maybe that's true, but we will never want memory of you. We but we only want you. Your life was a blessing. Your memory is a treasure. Your, you are love, the, 
You are loved beyond measure and miss beyond treasure. Thank you very much, Nicole. Yes. And we now have a tribute from our brother friend of Mikey, from Mr. Herbie Miller. Please, Mr. Miller, please make him welcome again. Yes. Give thanks. You know, I sat there listening to everyone talk about Mikey privately, the tributes, Ibu just now, among others. And there are some recurring words, some, some descriptions of Mikey that I said to myself, no point me going up there, I'm going to just be repeating. You know, the, the humility, the patience, the laugh without sound showing back his head, just that personality, the, the always giving. When Mikey died, I um, put together some notes on my own feeling about him. Some I'll not talk about because it was covered. So I'll just go through this. He was a noted multi-instrumentalist, colorful arranger, and more pointedly, a guitarist of exquisite taste. Michael Anthony Mikey Billy Mao Chung. He was as unsung as he was brilliant. Nevertheless, among his peers, this Vineyard Town resident is acknowledged for his quality works in studios and on bandstands at home and overseas. The second of four boys, Mikey followed Peter, a United States-based medical doctor, with the younger sibling, Charlie Raschalwa an agricultural scientist, and an occasional bassist. Of course, the late Jeffrey, musician, songwriter, engineer, producer, arranger, a good brethren. They made their mother, Miss Brenda, a very warm conversationalist, and she was a detailed seamstress. And of course, their father, a shopkeeper, very, very proud patient, parents. Mikey and Jeffrey were drawn to music as teenagers and as students at St. George's College. Despite Mikey's attempt as a singer, which he had his little group of, and sang, I think he even recorded a song or two, they established themselves as competent instrumentalists among the youth generation between the late 1960s and the early 70s. They both were charter members in the Now Generation Band, where Mikey on guitar, Jeff on keyboard, joined uh, drummer Laggy Martin, and fellow Georgian Val Douglas. There was a horn section as well. Studio work beckoned and Jeffrey and Mikey began working as freelance musicians at the middle of the road federal studios. Back in Ernest Smith, Pluto Chevrington, at a point to Bob Andy and others. And along with Jeffrey, Wire, Lindo, 
Robbie Lynn on keyboards, Val Douglas and Mikey Boo Richards on drums. Mikey recorded with Derek Harriott, Lloyd Matador, Harry J, among many others. In addition to recordings, he, uh, to, to um, other recordings, he was on Lorna Bennett's Breakfast in Bed, Ken Booth's Is It Because I'm Black, Chosen Few's version of Shaft, we heard that earlier on, Ernest Smith's Pitta Patta and Life is Just for Living, on which he played bass and overdub guitar on the latter. As a guitarist, Mikey developed an individual tone that was contemplative and imaginative in an understated manner. Stylistically, he had a penchant for clean, sparsely placed notes, which appeared to make his solos breathe. Consequently, he enriched the tune's color and authority vividly by crafting notes and chords that served as a dual function as a counter melody while pro providing noteworthy rhythmic accompaniment. Mikey did sessions independently at Dynamic Sounds before being associated with the revolutionary sound at Channel One and at Lee Perry's Black Ark Studios. Ultimately, an, extend, uh, an extended stint with Peter Tosh's World Sound and Power culminated with him being in the house band with drummer Sly Dunbar and bassist Robbie Shakespeare. At Chris Blackwell's internationally focused Compass Point Studios in Nassau, the Bahamas. That was in the 1980s. As a result, this first call musician backed various artists from across the scope of music, allowing more than a few international players to benefit from his talents. A checklist includes, as Tommy mentioned earlier on, Black Uhuru, Maxi, Grace Jones, Serge Gainsbourg, Bette Midler, Big Mountain, Art Ensemble of Chicago, which is quite an avant-garde jazz group. Just to see Mikey dealing with that was something else. James Brown, Joe Cocker, Sinead O'Connor, and the Ivorian Tekenja Fakola. That's a guy from Ivory Coast who flirts around with, with various styles of music. However, Mikey's reticent nature of being comfortable in the hue of the spotlight and leaving its luster to others belies his status as an eclectic and visionary musician. Distinctions acknowledged and respected by both his fans and peers. These gentlemen here will attest to that. And he was not skittish. He was not really an upfront guy, but at the same time, he wasn't really bashful. But like so many others, so many other ace musicians, I know you like David T. Walker, fantastic guitarist, who like Mikey or Mikey, like David T. Walker, felt more comfortable in the background, coloring and, and, and decorating the music of those under the lights. Um, all of this has said, been said already, so I'll skip that. His contribution to the canon is remarkable for his ubiquitousness, his role in reggae's evolution, selflessly employing his proficient capabilities to the genre's growth and popularity. Having done a stint at the former Jamaica School of Music, now the Edna Man, the School of the Visual and Performing Arts, Ibu just alluded to that. This is as a student, by the way, studying with the great Melba Liston. And Melba was an American jazz and pop arranger whose pedigree was honed through the writing charts for the fledgling Quincy Jones, Count Basie, Maestro Duke Ellington, and also arranging music at Motown for the likes of the Supremes, among others. She settled with 
Randy Weston's Afro Focus Band, and Mikey absorbed all of those kinds of influences from Melbourne. He particularly relished the opportunity to be involved with many small groups that she put together, including the prestige of accompanying the legendary tenor saxophonist Dexter Gordon. Mikey played bass behind Dexter at the Sheraton Hotel. Melba's mentorship enabled him to develop a stature as a musician experimenting with sound, textures, and colors. So when Peter Tosh envisioned that quality for his group, it was Mikey who got the call. He had already recorded with Peter before and Marga Dog and Half a Get a Beaten and was delighted to join Word Sound and Power. He was immediately dubbed Mao because of his likeness to the chairman Mao Tse Tung of China. While arranging for the band, Mao explored a sonic soundscape not typical of the artistic and aesthetic aura of, reggae idiom, of the reggae idiom. His arrangements on Bush Doctor, Mystic Man, Wanted, Dread and Alive are notable for their robust brass energy and sheer dynamics, most prominent on tracks such as Moses the Prophet, Bush Doctor, The Toughest, and Buckingham Palace. Buckingham Palace exemplifies Mao's mastery and savvy imagination. It is scored with a sense of dramatic satire, upbeat dynamics, mockery for the royal residence, and celebration of the Bush Doctor's Where's that? <laughs> Dean says so, I didn't. <laughs> The biggest herb tune, Buck in Ham Palace. <laughs> At the same time, he, he challenged Tosh's anti disco stance. Peter didn't dig disco music, he called it devil music. But Mikey went, went against Peter's vibe and he arranged the song with a disco vibe. And with a dis in those days, you have places like Studio 54 and all them crazy spaces where disco music was hot. And if you had a top disco tune yourself. Mikey scored the song specifically to have an appeal in discotheques internationally. And it did. It became a hit and was Peter's first certified goal record. Like everyone else, I found Mikey very adaptable, easygoing and engaging. A good storyteller with a twinkly personality that comes through when you see him throw back the head and close the eyes and give you like a, a laugh that really doesn't have sound, but it has a little sound still. He shared views and experiences readily and his reasoning was interestingly candid. This son of a Chinese immigrant father shared his experience of being taken to the homeland and living there as a child for two years. He chuckled and slyly related stories of consuming particular time-owned Chinese foods. He spoke about his family in China with a sense, in China with a sense of longing how he would like to someday go back there and reunite with them. <clears throat> in 2014, that day arrived. I was part of a party traveling to China for a four-week educational and cultural um, uh, uh, trip. I called Mike and I told him, and I said, Brethren, you have to be here. Um, we talked about how we we're going to get him there. And we got um, Lassell's Chin at Lasco to sponsor Mikey to come to China with us. And like it was on tours, again, his sense of humor was apparent. And the first morning, we decided we'd visit Tiananmen Square 
and then to the Great Wall. The, the photo you saw on the earlier thick clip there was Mikey in Tiananmen Square under the portrait of Chairman Mao. So we get to the Great Wall, and on ascending the wall, <laughs> Mikey realized his legs weren't up to the challenge. And again, that kind of amusing Mikey came out. He sat there and kind of said, look, go ahead of me. So a few of us journeyed ahead. We too realized this wall was something monumental. So, you know, we experienced the Great Wall. We didn't have to walk all the way. And we turned back. <laughs> when I went down there and joined Mikey sitting there, like a little rascal, he slapped his leg and he said, he laughed and he said, you know, I should have come back to China long before. The legs, them are going like a whole boy. No, remember I mentioned he had family there. By the next day, Mikey connected with his family and left the group for one week, returning the day before we departed. I recall in some old stories he told me, asked if he had feasted on any of, any of that unique Chinese meal. Mikey laughed and answered me in Chinese. <laughs> I never asked him what the, how to translate it. I just figured out by the look on his face that he was beyond that and he didn't eat any. In 2020, I invited Mikey to participate in one of the Grow Nation sessions I produced for the Institute of Jamaica, the Jamaica Music Museum. By then, he was spending most of his time in New York because of the access to, to, to taking care of his ailment. But he agreed to come, and he came. So he was able to reunite with some of the brethren that he performed with in the early days. Um, Charlie came out and played some bass. Lydie Parks was there, among others. And we had a great time. It was in celebration of the Chinese contribution, as again, Tommy alluded to earlier on. It's amazing if you look at the Chinese contribution, we perhaps would not have this great music without them, you know. That's another argument, though. So not only did, did um, it allow Mikey to renew, reunite with them, as I said, but for sure he provided stalwart musicianship to the different groups he backed. With Elon befitting a genuine connoisseur, Mikey Mao demonstrated his ability to convey aesthetic substance devoid of cliches. He wasn't playing no like repetitious everyday sounds. Mikey got into the guitar as if he knew it would be one of the final opportunities to perform for an audience. Um, moreover, he performed with such clarity and liquefying lyricism that the notes basically seemed to drip like, like when you're in a steady drizzle. So those folks in the audience who could relate to music on that level were really, really pleased that we had a musician who wasn't turning the amplifier up, who wasn't putting too much fuzz on it, not too much feedback, but just enough to hear the clean notes and the, the, the empathy with the rest of the men on the stage and the artists themselves. At the early stage of his illness, Mikey recorded songs with some of the musicians with whom he shared memorable moments in studios and on the road. Hopefully, hopefully, he left it at a stage where Dean or one of you can complete it so it can be released in Mikey's name. As a musician, Mikey was ubiquitous but unpretentious. Many of you have alluded of that, to that quality of his. A priceless contributor to many of the island's prominent vocalists and musicians, and a valuable collaborator with some of pop music's most notable artists. Like his contemporaries and frequent band and studio collaborators, 
Sly Dunbar, Robbie Shakespeare, among others. Some sitting right here, Bubbler, Dean, Lloyd Parks. Mikey reached the stage where he recognized he was an essential contributor to the history and development of popular Jamaican music. There comes a point where all of your humility has to be set aside when you reflect and assess your own self. And in all honesty, with all the hum humility, he was able to accept that he did make a vital contribution. He realized the ephemeral and the tangible cultural objects should depict the legacy in addition to audio and visual recordings. To that end, one of Mikey's prized guitars, a Gibson Electric, the one he played Dean's tune on, the ganja song, Buck in Ham Palace, symbolizes his contribution to Jamaican music as it is beautifully displayed at the Jamaica Music Museum with a little bio and this, this, uh, some of the music on which he played that particular guitar when he donated it to the people of Jamaica. Therefore, Mikey Mo Chung and his creative legacy will remain an inspiration for universal goodwill to those who experienced and experienced and experienced his contribution. Along with others who will um, discover the guitar and good-natured musician, all who knew Mao would be encouraged by his warmth for others, regard for human dignity, and dedicating to artistic elegance, uh, excellence. And for those who saw his courage while ill throughout the final two years of his life, his strength and character to prevail. More than many, Mikey Mao Chung symbolized the essence of reggae and the finest of Jamaican's attributes because he insisted on the highest quality, qualitative standard musically, humanly, and personally. He understood that it could be roots, intelligent, and refined all at the same time. As a musician, this brethren occupied the top, top shelf and uplifted as many others as he could and whenever practical. That is what he represented because he valued equality over partiality. Those characteristics reflect the excellence. Consequently, Michael Anthony Moore Billy Chong, Mikey, exemplified the consummate national model of what must be honored and celebrated about us as a people. This brethren will most certainly be missed by all. All of us will miss Mikey. Give thanks. Thank you so much, Herbie. Herbie, you really um, looked into the life of Mikey and um, the significance of Mikey will never be rubbed out of our history in Jamaica. Thank you so much once again, Herbie Miller. And right now we continue with a, a reading from Zara Chong, niece of Mikey, and she'll be followed by Ras Chalwa, Mikey's brother, and then we go into some more music. Please, can we have the microphone, please? Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I will be reading this poem as a tribute to Uncle Billy, titled titled The Music of Life. We are co-composers of our lives and choose many a beautiful melody 
And often there are discordant passages which mellow and become mature. It is all one creative effort from start to finish. The music can be cut short with abominable violence. Unfinished symphonies there are in the millions. And our music harmonizes with others to produce something grander and more beautifully complex. And our music jars with others. And we have to learn that all composers are different and that we are all fairly rudimentary in our rhapsodies and ensembles. Once in a while, we manage to be in tune with some unknown and more powerful musical inspiration which transfigures our paltry notes into majesty and genius. Though short, they mean everything. When the music stops, there is complete silence, which ends abruptly in thundering applause. Bravo, encore, bravo. Thank you. Thank you so much, Zara. And now we welcome Mikey's brother, Charlie, uh, Rash Chalwa Chung. Let's just welcome him, please. Yes, give thanks. And um, greetings on behalf of the, the Chung family. It is really heartening to see so many people turn out to to, to, to um, chant for my brother, you know, who really loved all of the people in the music industry, regardless of whether people have differences here and there. He really loved people developing this music industry, and it's great to see all of you here. Um, well, it, you have mentioned the different names that you had, right? And some people speak about how you get the name Mao. But we in the family know him as Billy. Now, Billy, the way he get that name, you know, as a little youth, he, he was a fat youth, just like how you see him grow. But he, he used to love food, right? And close by to where we live, because we lived in a shop in Christiana. And he used to visit a site where some man was working, some construction work and thing, but them cook food every day. So Billy present himself and get involved you know, and get food every day. The man him tell him, say, yes, you would come in and... Is the man them call him Billy, you know? Them say him come in like Billy the Kid. So that's how I'm getting Billy. Just, just to share that with you, right? I don't have to go through what has been gone through already as the pleasantry and the, jo jo the jovialness. Humble boy, Sparrow, give thanks to your talking you know, about Virgin. Yeah, man. Great, 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 great. <laughs> special, you know, it's special. Um, everyone's special still, but I have to mention Sparrow. Don't feel no way. Um, he was born in 1950, the, son, the second son of five of a Chinese immigrant father who took the name James. He did have a Chinese name, but he took the name James because, of course, he's a Jamaica, you don't want to just use a Chinese name. So he took James. And a China African mother, for those who don't never hear the term here, China Africa is a, a mixture between Chinese and African, right? And her name was Brenda, she was a, a dressmaker in the rural islands of Christiana. He grew up there for a period of nine years, attending infant primary school, and he also went to high school at Knox, where he met Ibu. He helped in the shop, mostly, but mostly as youth, ramping, enjoying my childhood. And one thing I remember, the whole family of us, the four of us, not our eldest brother, took part in a play, Mother Goose, which Jeff was a key character I don't remember the character that Mikey played, right? Um, between 59 to 61, well, well, Herbie has mentioned that they went to Hong Kong. But something which Herbie mentioned and never really go into, I'm going to just shed some light on it, right, as we go down. He, he really liked that trip, as Herbie mentioned, learned the language and so forth. Um, but just like Jamaica at the time as a, as a commonwealth country, Hong Kong was the same thing because Britain took over Hong Kong from China. After the Opium Wars of 1800s, they took it away from China and flooded China with, with, with opium. Um, so, so Billy, 
Billy loved the experience there, but he learned the same kind of learning like we, the British system. Coming to, 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 to Herbie now, the Bowow steak I know you're talking about. Right? So he mentioned that, but what he said was that they have a special breed of Bowow. They raise them and feed them certain things, and it's them, them work. Right, so I just I, I say I need to clarify that I, I need to add to it. After independence, we moved to Kingston, and it's there the music take off with Mikey, because we lived at five and a half Maxwell Avenue, Wanda Bakery, right at the corner of Burke Road. But across from the bakery was the great Tuare Crescent, where the South Saint Anjo Benevolent Association had a, a building, and at that building there was a big concrete area inside here where every weekend you have dance, right? And the song, the music just blasts the whole weekend. And that is where, he talk about it a lot too, that that is where he got his baptism into the Jamaican music. Them times there was scared with Coxon and so forth, uh, Machuki and, and, and Stitch and them guys. So, um, next door to us was also the Kitty Mat Club. They had a roof, a roof where bands used to play. And we used to hear music over there all the while. People used to come there, live music as well as, as, as records and things. And it's, those sounds rocked us to sleep many times, many nights, right? We, we, as, as, at, at that time, you know, TV wasn't very frequent or, or common. No, Mr. Tuare, as a big man, they'd have him TV. And we used to go across the road and not for we get up on the, on the veranda and watch Bonanza and them kind of show there. It was really nice. But that is the kind of experiences that we went through. We went to places like Mac, uh, Majestic and Ritz Theater. And there was also a, 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 what you call it, a circus at Maxfield Park we were went to. The first I ever got to a circus. At that time, no, Billy and Jeff got to George's where they met Luyen and those guys. Not Luyen, um, Peter Luyen. There was Paul Luyen at Casey, Peter at George's. And um, me and Peter went to, me and my brother Peter went to Blake's Prep. Um, we used to deal with helping at the bread shop and things, and a lot of interaction between me and the customers as youths, you know, whole a joke and thing. and man try some little things for, for trick us and things, but sometimes them get you, sometimes they don't get you. Okay, he developed a, a love for cooking. And he, from long time, the food thing, because he loved food, he just grew to love cooking. And in fact, at the bakery, he used to regularly cook him kalalo with enough pepper, and then would I get the bread from, you know, the, 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 from in the, 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 the bakery. And of course, we have a wash, we wash it down. So all those kind of experiences are things we came up with. He experimented one day. He, exper he exp experimented with a steel bun. Apparently, him think he could put the steel bun in the plastic, wet it, moisten it, put it in the plastic bag, and put it in the sun. Put it in the sun now. Cause so when you put it in the sun now, it's like you you're, you're steam it. So I'm going to enjoy it when I'm done. So when I'm finished now, I'm take a big bite, and boy, I don't know what my cinnamon starts stagger. Coming like you no know, blood no in him and the man start vomit. And boy, it was a tragic thing, but we couldn't help but laugh, you know. We laughed half him that day. You know, but apparently what it done was some mold or ginger was growing on the bun. So apparently some toxins in it had the better of him. But he learned a lesson that day. He learned a lesson that day. In 63 we moved to, to Vineyard Town where the, 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 the music career really took off. Um, I'm sorry, and I need to apologize here, as it come to me, that the thing is, the, the event is so long. The planning was not up to mark. There are people who have sent in um, what you call tributes, and we have not heard them. And I noticed people, a lot of people have moved and thing. So really sorry about that, right? But we, it will be on YouTube with everything, so people can go back and watch it, all right? So um, in Vineyard Town, the music really took off with um, he and Val Douglas went to Chaos and they started doing session work because Nine used to go there and draw them out and carry them to, to the sessions. And they didn't complete the course. 
Jeff was at UWE doing medicine. Jeff didn't complete the course either. So music just pulled them away because I think maybe it's inbound, but also the experiences at Maxwell Avenue and also in Vineyard Town when we started singing like Curtis Mayfield songs and um, Clarendon and sang the Beatles songs. Because we had an experience where we, and, and Lennox mentioned it in his, in his tribute, where me, Billy, and Jeff, we used to play music. Billy was playing a little um, bamboo with sardine tin and um, fishing line, guitar, which he made. Jeff was playing the drums using a geometry set. And I was playing the bass. Now the bass, we use a box. A box, just a box, it's an ice box, but it, it have a, the, the top is open, it's kind of square-like, and the ice is, is in there with the drinks and things. Well, we had an old one, so we turn it over, bore the bottom, and put a, a wire coming up on, a, on, a, on a, a piece of stick. And now when you hold it, you have to stretch it to get the note, a higher note, easy to get the lower note. So that is how we, I used to play the bass. Billy played the guitar, and, and Jeff played the drums. And then Lennox you know, from next door would come in and harmonize, all of us harmonizing. So all of that took us into the music. I really never continue because I guess I never have the, the stick to itiveness to deal with it. Right? Um, so, so then after that you now, they, they went to Coxon with Lennox and sang People Get Ready. Billy also played lead guitar on that song, and they also did um, Engelbert Humperdinck's Yours Until Tomorrow. Billy also played on that song. So it was a big thing for them to know that you go to the mighty Studio One and do a record, and it come out, and you hear it. So we can see it's the same experience that all the musicians went through at that time. They never really too fussy about mo money, just the love for it, and the, when the feeling, the, 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 the kind of, the kind of um, feeling it gave you when your friends talk to you about it, you know? He prided himself as being somebody who played in almost every band in Jamaica. And people have mentioned it. But one other thing I want to say at Antrim Road, and Herbie mentioned it, and I think Sparrow, a lot of people gathered at that house. Home tea for people from um, home tea, Pablo Moses, Dan Prendes, Alan Johnson, who is here with the Kingston All Stars, you know, and many others. Dave Dennis Brown used to pass through, I Jam and Levi and so forth, right? And they worked with them. In the early 70s, Billy was one of the first students at the Jamaica School of Music, along with others such as Dwight, Dwight Pinkney, Dwight Pinkney Bubbles Cameron, Eggy Evans, and Mickey Hanson. Some of them are here. He opened, openly lamented the fact that they completed the course, but apparently the attitude of the authorities changed at the end of the course, and none of them got their, 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 their certificates. I understand that efforts are being made now to rectify that, even at this late stage, and I'm, I'm happy, happy to hear that. He did a lot of arrangements, as Herbie mentioned. Um, Peter Touch, Mystic Man, Sly Wicked and Slick album also. Outside of his career, he did catering in, 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 in um, Jamaica at one time, and he also worked as a chef in New York at several hotels and so forth. He used to come back from abroad and bring recipes that he, ex he was exposed to over there and cook it here for people. He, he really loved it that way. He married twice and had a daughter, and he, he, um, he, he divorced on both occasions. Around 2017, he was diagnosed with a blood cancer, which lintiate his, his favorite guitarist also had. He sought medical treatment in New York, where through the intervention of Chris Blackwell, he was enrolled in, in the multiple myeloma clinic at Mount Sinai Hospital. Here he developed a close re relationship with one of the two myeloma specialist doctors, who actually turned out to be a guitarist too. And I think something that we might need to take note of, he initially hesitated in taking the recommended treatment when he saw that doctor. Later he changed his mind, but by that time it had apparently progressed too far 
So the treatment did not work. And um, he was advised to, to come home. So he came home and, and, and um, he, he went through COVID, recovered too, surprisingly. And then, you know, the rest is history. His final gig was, as Herbie mentioned, the groundation stint down at the um, Institute. What I'd like to say is that his life ex exemplifies as a Chinese, as a Chinese, he's a Chinese African because his mother have African and his father is full Chinese. Chinese African, his majesty says, where there is even a drop of African blood, there is room for, there is justification for unity. His life exemplifies a journey of peoples of the colonized world. Their predicament being brought together in a strange place. Their struggles to survive and coexist with these many challenges, which we all know, most time we don't talk about them. And their achievements against all odds to produce such giants on a global scale. We have a lot of musicians, we have a lot of sports people, we have a lot of scientists coming out of this little island, out of those circumstances. And Mikey represented one of those. Finally, he asked for a low-key send-off with a cremation and said that anything we saved from it should go to the needy. Now, I want to say to all here, if whoever is interested in contributing, we are going to set up a website where you can go later and um, contribute if you can. Right? So I am asking everyone if they would write their name and address, email address or phone number in the condolence book at the front before you leave so we can contact you to, to give you that information. All right? Thank you very much. Yes, praise the Lord. Ah, my key is in a safe place. Okay, um, so as Chalwa was explaining to you that some of the tributes uh, you will be able to see on YouTube. Um, I'm not sure, maybe after we have closed off, if some will still be on the screen, you can still be viewing it. Um, but right now, we would... Uh, like to ask the the tribute group for Mikey Chong to to take us not, not out Robbie but <laughs> take us to that point where we pray for the family as a matter of fact you know what we're just gonna pray for the family and ask the group of musicians to play so Lord and Father we just Bless Mikey Chung family at this time. We ask, Lord, that the peace that passeth all understanding be unto them right now. Lord, we ask that they have rest in their minds and to understand that wherever Mikey is, he's in the bosom of his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for the goodness and for all that he had contributed to us and into humanity. Lord, that the world that he came into that he left it a better place and now we ask for peace for the family and we say the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you the lord turn his face toward you and give you peace we thank you as we now turn over to the mikey chung tribute band featuring Grub Cooper is now on 
the drums. Who else has come in? And vocals. Yes? All right. Thank you so much. And Chris McDonald. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing now. Thank you, Lord, for every little thing. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord, for you made me sing. I want to sing along, sing along. Say I'm in no competition, but I make my submission. You can keep your opinion. I'm just crawling on the wise man's confusion. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing now, right now. Thank you, Lord, for every little thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord, you make the birds to sing. Sing along, sing along. like to say our condolences from the Fab Five family and by extension the Sing Out family because you know we're associated with Mikey from them time Sing Out Jamaica as was mentioned earlier by Sparrow yeah man everything is good is Billy Hamilton in the house you there boy Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck 
King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Sit upon his throne and he rules us all. Look into the book of life and you will see that he rules us all.
Yes, yes. Let's dance together. Yeah. And we're gonna contribute, continue with tributes on screen. Yes. Thank you so much. One more time, let's give it up. But I'm less big, come up with your Lucifer. Oh. Blessed now. Yeah, man. Give thanks, you know. I come from earth and did your, did your journey did the whole full cycle of the flesh and you know, left a, a nice legacy for all of us to follow, you know yeah, man. Um, as I said, when I, I call when we just link up in the 70s when we were doing the album with Icon and he introduced me to the eyes then, man. You know, Charlie, Jeffrey and I. It was a, you know, like a, something for me, for, for this, so, like Chinese Jamaican, so talented and a help. You know, the local, you know, just build up the local music industry and to look up foreign and, you know, international and, yeah, man, I did great works, all of the items, you know. And that's why uh, so I'm gonna give thanks for the know the eye, you know. As there's a humble man, you know, full of laughter. You know, I just love good food and good music and I always a, a whole of joy that laugh, you know. I always a smile and laugh. And, and if it was I guess if you when you were sad and angry, I think you'd take with yourself because we never saw you like that. So <laughs> you just come and you know you did the journey bro and I did great and I mean, know you continue your journey upon the next realms. So as as you know you know so I, the word take on to the flesh. So the flesh are just for a time and I come and live it. And now you are trod on for the next realms. Like the whole way, I go follow after, I uh, will on the said journey. So, let's go and continue the journey, Aya. You know, there is a great soul, a beautiful soul. So, let's go and spread the love the same way. And you can feel that energy the same way, you know, same way, you know. So, let's go and live up the same way, Aya. Life ever living. I don't know. And so we go on and do the thing till them time then. You know. So all we can say is just a little more. See in fire? <laughs> till them time there. But that's why you know that you came and you did the things that you know was right and you did it and live a happy life and that's what life is about Rasta. To live and love yourself and others, you know, the caring and the sharing. So till them time them all, just big up yourself faster and you don't know, make a more, big up. Greetings. If you knew Mikey Chung, then one of the first things that would come to mind was his often emerging smile, followed by a quiet chuckle. To my mind, Mikey was a gentle soul who would from time to time produce these zen-like philosophical gems whether on small things he noticed or the news of the day. 
I recall a time when he was giving an account of a mento album he had played bass on recently. He said, and musicians will particularly understand this, the, uh, this, there were about 15 songs, which is a high number for an album. And the bass line consisted of one five, one five, one five constantly. The first song was like that, then the second, then the third, and then Mikey paused, broke out a smile and said, and to break the monotony, you change the line to five one, five one, five one, and gave the quiet chuckle. I don't recall exactly when I met Mikey, but it was sometime between when his brother Jeffrey was singing in the Peter Ashburn Affair and when I started teaching at the Jamaica School of Music, which would make it sometime between 1969 and 1977. Interestingly, at the School of Music, Mikey was my student, even though we were both the same age. What I do know is that when he started working with me, he played both guitar and bass for my projects. From jingles to film music to live performance, Mikey consistently showed his versatility. Mikey also had good big picture skills that served him well as an arranger. Among our joint achievements were the JBC radio themes of the late 1970s and a memorable recording session in the USA tri-state area with some of the best known session musicians of that era. I was only able to enjoy Mikey's talents as a chef on a few occasions, but I certainly regret not having had more opportunities to sample his creations. Keep on smiling, Mikey, and we're waiting for the chuckle. Hi, my name is Hun Cho. I'm a doctor at Mount Sinai in New York. I help take care of Mikey. It was a real honor and pleasure to get to know him, and uh, we all miss him terribly up here in New York. I wrote a little song for him. Hope you like it. Sinai. I work with Mikey. Um, truly will miss him and it's been a great knowing him. It's such an honor. He was a great guy and we had a lot of great talks together in clinic and getting to know him just as a person um, was really meaningful to me. So um, this is for Mikey. Hi, I'm Chloe. I'm the nurse practitioner. I took care of Mikey for a long time. Um, always a joy to see in clinic. Very pleasant never complained about anything, smiled, had a good story to tell. So we, we miss him a lot. Hi, I'm Franny. I'm one of the nurse practitioners I, um, to help take care of Mikey. Um, always loved getting to talk with him during our visits. And um, he was always a pleasure. He was always a pleasure. Um. Good day, good day. My name is Oki Smith and I'm a family friend of the late Michael Chung, otherwise known as Billy. I know Billy like for the entire of my life time. Um, when I used to go like high school and so forth and even art, sometimes I really go down there, go check my godfather and at times Billy would, would be also there. Sometimes he'll be like maybe in the kitchen cooking, sometimes he may be like on his um, computer 
you know digging some music and stuff sometimes you may be like playing the guitar or you know in just doing what he do, do just doing what he does best right um i'm watch him get to learn certain things i'm sure me so him is a great motivator he's an icon he's an idol and may his soul rest in peace yeah my name is uh, martin sinclair um a lot of people just know me as Lagi, been a long time drummer um i knew michael chung from about 1970 very early 70s and um you know we played together in a band called the virtues at first that's where i met him and um and then when that band faded away he he invited me, he and my friend Dougie, favorite bass man, Douglas Valentine, invited me to play with them in a band called The Now Generation. Um, the Now Generation was a, a road dance band at the time, the best band of, in that time. And that lasted for a while. Um, and then that band eventually transitioned to primarily a studio group. Um, uh, we, we, you know, this when the serious thing started, we were men together, but um, uh, due to circumstances, due to circumstances, some of us went our separate way as our own personal circumstance would dictate. So, you know, we went in different directions, but we still kept in touch. All right, um, it's in the studio that I got to fully, fully, fully know. I always knew that he was good, but in the studio I know that Mikey was a real genius, you know. By the way, he could play every instrument except brass. Couldn't handle the brass section, but everything else. So he was able to give, and, and he liked to give advice or um, instructions, so as it were, to any and everybody else who would accept it. You know, you know, you know but he was good about it. So I am... Um, as a, for example, he was very instrumental in the development of Earl Wyerlind, who was a keyboard player, I can tell you that. Who was a very close friend of mine also. Um, anyway, um, he was a very kind, giving kind of person. He was kind to a fault in that um, he gave his service to a lot of situations where he was never fully compensated. You know, he didn't see his name on anything. You know, the numbers didn't come out for him and all that, but he was still able to make a good living for himself. And um, he spoke about that, but he was not bitter. And um, you, you, he was, um, you never hear anyone say anything bad about this man. Never. I can't recall that at all, right? I'm saying he was perfect, but that's the kind of person he was. And he got along well with everybody. And he, 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 you knew where he was. He'll tell you his mind clear and straight. And that's that's all I ask for in a person. You know where he stood on any issue at any time. And that's more than good enough for me. So, right. Um, you know, some people took advantage of his kindness and his very generous disposition. So, you know. But anyway, as time went on... Um, Mikey event, eventually um, he, he developed very strong Christian beliefs and he and I as a Christian myself he and I we, we would talk about it at length and um, you know he he wasn't afraid to face death we believe as Christians we believe that there's just this side to, to eternity and there's another side so he was not afraid to death but he wasn't afraid to face death, but um, while he was alive during his illness, he gave himself as much chance of living as as was available to him. At this time, I must thank all those people who helped make him comfortable in his last days, last years for that matter. Um, you know, especially his brother Peter, the doctor, and um, Charlie, yes, brother Chalwa, and um and Rudy Manning, my good home T4 friend in New York. Um 
you know, we, we you know, we they made um is is situation as comfortable as the circumstances would allow. So um, and a, and a special thanks to Charlie, who um came down well I, on a short visit to Jamaica recently. He came all the way to Portmore, picked me up, and took me all the way to the University Hospital where Mikey was getting treatment. And um, I was able to talk with Mikey, and, and we had a very good conversation. I, you know, was told that his cognition was on and off sometimes, you know, but, but this time he was there, he was all there. And we had a good conversation and a good little laugh and all that. And that was very, very nice. I was really, really, really happy to see him. But the sad thing is that the very next day, um, Charlie called me and told me that he had passed on. And that really, really, really hurt. But you know, um, the sickness that he had, um, more than likely he wasn't coming back, wasn't gonna get better from it. So um, he's not suffering anymore. He's not in any pain or any discomfort anymore. So all we can do right now is to thank God for the time that he gave us with um, with Mikey, the good time that we had with Mikey. We thank God for that. And so Mikey, Mikey, and Michael Anthony Chung, called Billy, Mao, and just play Mikey. Well, first of all, just to introduce myself, I am Lennox Robinson, a friend of Billy that is dating back some 50 years. We live together, or side by side, I should say, on Antrim Road. Billy was at Two Antrim Road and I was at Four Antrim Road. Very soon as being neighbors, I found out the musical deposit that God had put in Billy and his brother Jeffrey and Charlie too. Because in those early days, there were no instruments to play and Billy in his innovative musical genius style was able to take a square rectangular drum at the back of his house, put a stick on one end and a closed line stringing from the stick, the top of the stick, back to the rectangular drum. And that was his first bass guitar. He would strike this line at different heights of the perpendicular part of the line and then it made different sounds and that's how Billy played the bass. That's how he started to understand what music is. So we sang together and then we ended up at Studio One with Coxon and made a few songs. One I remember is People Get Ready at the Mentrals. But I left Jamaica and Billy and his brother remained in music and grew in music. Became one of the best studio bass players there ever was and will be in this country. And I remember coming back to, J to Jamaica on vacation while I was in university. And they had grown to the point where they were the backing and accompanying band for the great Dennis Brown. And Jeffrey went on to make all kinds of music. But when Jeffrey made music, Billy was there because he was the support. Billy was a musical genius, an ear for something that a God-given gift of music that he just had. A wonderful person, a person that never left out the poor and thinking about the poor to give to them. And in fact, when I spoke to Charlie, Recently, he just said that all Billy is concerned about is just to give to poor people. That was his heart. He was a good soul, a great person. I remember him so much and can see him so much in my mind because it, it, in those early formative years of trying to, know, to think about what to do with your life, Billy and Jeffrey and just think about music. I will be a musician. I'll, I'll bring musical joy to people in this country. They are responsible. Billy is responsible for so many of the great hits that have, we have learned to love and it made deep contributions into them. A great singer too. A great background vote vocal. Knows his harmony. Knows how to do it. That was Billy. Billy, you have been a wonderful friend and a great person. A great person to have walked on the land of Jamaica and have walked in the lives of so many people. May your soul rest in peace, your brother, 
Lennox. Blessed love, this is Danny Brownie. Irie, one love to all, this is Glenn Brownie. And I'm Cleve Brownie. And we, we are, are the Brownie, Brownie Bunch. Bunch. And there are two members that are not with us right now, which is Noel, who is somewhere in England. And there is also Dalton Brownie, who has transitioned. And he's with Mikey making some nice, really oh, loud. Tell them why you're here. How, 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 <laughs> so you can imagine when those two guitarists meet. Because Mikey was also one of the influence on Dalton's playing and development. So we are here to speak about Mikey, really. <laughs> Enough love and respect to that program. Yes, sir. We met Mikey Chong, well, I met Mikey Chong in the early 70s, and he realized that there was some talent here and realized my aspiration and my passion was to be a musician. At the time, mostly vocals because I had a little sound system and a little room that's so why I used to gather all my brothers and we got together, panned the leak amplifier to the left and got just music track and then we would sing to it. And of course, that was great song. I felt great about that. So I gave the idea to Mikey at one of his rehearsals when I met the in-crowd band Robbie Lynn and the Now Generation. So, long story short, that's where it all started. Mikey decided, okay, I know sound good enough. I think we can do a recording. And there was a song that was on, it was the B-side of one of the Jackson 5 singles. And that's, we got a good thing going. Remember that you there? Yeah. yeah. You sing it now? Yeah. We got a good ten years <laughs> old. You have tried wow. now. Try, 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 try. Anyway. <laughs> Mikey could get me to do it. <laughs> He's not here to do not that. Here to do that. <laughs> so, Mikey decided, okay, I'll produce the Brownie Bunch. Well, the name was given to us also by Mikey Chung. Um... So in 1972, we had our first single release. Good thing going. What was novel about that was, we were like the Jamaican Jackson 5. There are five brothers, and the Jackson 5, of course. And we had a good sound. And of course, Mikey and Jeffrey, they were really top class musicians of the day, and also, top class budding producers because they know everything with time grew. He was a mic, he was also responsible for us doing our first live show, Excelsior. Oh my God, Excelsior. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have nightmares yeah, with that yeah, memory, yeah, don't man. you? Yeah, the varying degrees. <laughs> but it, it, it was great because, you know, youngsters coming up, you were what, 10? 12? 12? 12, yeah. 12. I was 10. You're old. I was 10. Yeah, man. Okay. Oh. And yeah. I don't know that people like Pamal was in the audience. Yeah, you know, the yeah, excess the knees would have yeah. shaken some more. Yeah, people like <laughs> Steven Stewart must have been there too, who yeah. ended up being one of our close friends and also engineer on our project. But Mikey essentially was a mentor to us. Even when Jeffrey Chung got involved, he got Jeffrey involved at a production level because Jeffrey was ahead in terms of production and management and had all the links and he loved the group and loved the idea. So we followed up with things like um, Fun For All, mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. Silly, mm -hmm. um, Going Choo Like Choo Train. Train. Choo -choo Train. Mm -hmm. So Jeffrey got involved with that. But even though Jeffrey was involved in producing those songs in following years, Mikey was always there with us and for us and also helped to shape my idea of what a good production should sound like and how we should unite as a group and the things we should be listening and doing. So this is really to say thanks to Mikey. Yes, sir. Thanks for the yeah. journey. Thanks for imparting the knowledge and for sharing lots of things with us, lots of things. Because we used to go to his house when we did rehearsals. I used to go there and get information about good recording and what 
we could aspire to be as youngsters. Here we are today, five brothers who have made contribution to the industry, and we don't have to get into that because those of you who are industry people know us all. We've all been doing things together at some level. So Mikey, safe journey home, job blessings, Give thanks for your mentorship. Mm. Give thanks for your time. Give thanks for your love. Bless the family, and we move forward in peace and unity. Rastafari blessings. Blessed love. Yes, we had a good thing going. A good, good thing going, yeah. Mikey and we. Love you, Mikey. Yes, Mikey. Travel. Greetings. My name is Rudolph Ruddy Manning, founding member of the reggae vocal group Home T, formed as Home T4 in 1972. I first encountered Mikey Chung in 72, a Dynamics recording studio and an Erman Chinlai session. We were, uh, the session was aborted because Herman wanted his own studio because of the cost of the studio time. Fast forward to 1975, he built a studio behind his record shop and start producing records again. When we went there, the house bands were the in crowd and now generation band. We recorded two songs produced and arranged by Mikey Chung, but the deal fell through. So we decided to do our own stuff and we started a little production company called Mushroom, We5 Production. We started to rehearse to record our own, our own tunes and Mikey got sick. So he was in the hospital for about two weeks. When he came out of the hospital, when we were ready to go again, one of the members, he is one of the founding members, had to migrate because his papers came through, had to go be with his family. So we, the tr three of us continued to rehearse. Then we recorded, the first song we recorded in 1976 with Mikey was a cover of Stop Children Watch His Song. He produced, arranged, and he sang harmony. We put it out on our own mushroom label. It was exported to Europe, get pirate all around the place. And between 1976 and 1980 or so, we did a number of singles and released. They were exported. And um, we, have a, we had an LP worth of songs. Could put out an LP. Some, didn't, some are still not released. But over the, over the years, Mikey helped Home T for a lot. He gave us a lot of his time at night, rehearsing us and grooming us. And then... He, he, then he had to go, when, when, when he went on tour with Peter, when he joined Peter Touch in 1978, we rehearsed with Jeffrey, we did some recordings with Jeffrey. When he come back, he take, take us over and we had a very good relationship with Mikey. He was very patient with us and teaching us a lot of things about music. Then he migrated in about 1980. And two years after that, I migrated to, to New York too. And we kept our French, friendship and our musical collaboration. We, we, um, he, he got a, when the four track tech, a machine came out, he bought one and I went to his house one weekend and I recorded about 10 or 12 of my songs. And they're somewhere in my house, you know, on cassette tape. Then we actually did an LP worth of rhythm tracks, basic rhythm tracks that he played everything. And that got shelved again. But all through our time in New York from 80 to 92, when he returned to Jamaica, we kept in touch and we did music. And we did, we did three songs that was done on a 624 track tape. They were never released. So I, I'm, I'm always with Mikey Chung. Then he came back to Jamaica. And we are, we always kept in touch, talk about music every time. When he comes back to New York, he come to my house. He was there when my children were born and christened, christened. Yes, when they were born, he was there too. He come 
I look for my wife in the hospital, look for the babies. And um, we always keep in touch. And I would say Mikey Chung is a very important person in the history of Jamaican music and the development and progress of Jamaican music. He's a, he's a person like this. When he goes, any musical situation he goes into, his influence is immediately felt. And he's not a person who, who is show off. He's just laid back. Um, as far as I know, Mikey Chung, like his brother, is a musical genius. Music just comes easy, easy, easy to these, these brothers. All right. So, um, then fast forward to 2011. I always wanted by the 90s, Mikey Bennett had stopped singing and gone into record production and studio, running off a studio. But I always wanted to sing with Leroy Palm and Bagger Case. So I told Mikey, boy, if I get the money, I'm going to do a, an album with Bagger and Palmer. So that happened. I called up Mikey and said, Mikey, I want to do an album. So he came to New York. Show him the tunes that I had, relate some tracks. And then he came back to Jamaica and voiced Bag and Palmer. The album is called Send Come Call Me. And if you listen to that album, it was produced and arranged by Mikey Chung. I did some co-production. If you listen to that album, you'll hear the genius of Mikey Chung. I think that was the last great thing that he did. And by the way, he has a Mikey Chung album that he was working on on which all of his favorite his favorite musicians and associates he asked them Softly singing Singing praises to the king on heaven's throne And the power that keeps creation flowing Has revealed himself with love forevermore he is my reason for living He is the great King of Kings Jesus, my sweet blessed Savior God is my everything as my memory turns back the pages 
I can't forget the day he called me to his door Yes, his favor still keeps the old heart beating Has renewed my strength in him forevermore He is my reason for living He is the great king of kings Yeshua, my sweet blessed Savior Yahweh is everything He is my reason for living He is the great King of kings Jesus, my sweet blessed Savior God is my everything As I worship and sing praise to Him on high I can feel His mighty presence fill my soul the joy and honor for my salvation Has proclaimed the bond with Him forevermore He is my reason for living He the great King of kings Jesus, my sweet, blessed Savior, God is my everything, He is my everything, Yahweh. with certainty that music and vintage reggae music in particular was part of the DNA of Mikey Chong. So much so that for the past 50 years he has been one of the pioneers playing alongside the great Sly and Robbie, Earl Wyalinda, Robbie Lynn, Val Douglas, among others. In his early playing days he was a member of the top session and studio band, No Generation, responsible for backing monster hit Breakfast in Bed, the reggae version sung by Lorna Bennett, for which his brother, late Jeffrey, was one of the engineers. Peter Tosh's commercially successful album, Mama Africa, saw the magic of the Chong brothers again in a mix, with Mikey and Redin guitar, and Jeffrey as the one of the engineers. Mikey's enduring love for music and his musical talent enabled him to travel worldwide with Peter Tosh Band, World Sound and Power, and in later times, Bujo At the height of his career, Mikey recorded guitar and various tracks of the 2015 Grammy nominated The Reggae Power, put out by VP Records, featuring Sly Dunbar and Robbie Shakespeare with Spicy Chocolate, alongside various artists from Jamaica and Japan, also featured. Apart from, the decent, apart from the decent person that he was, Mikey Chung's versatility as a player of many instruments and as a musical arranger and manager of outstanding talent, the late Garnet Silk, his professional contribution to reggae music will be sadly missed. Rest in peace, my brother. To be talking about my good friend Mao is a sad day. Mo and I go way back to high school at St. George's. And the last couple of years, whenever he visited Canada, he would stay with me. We reminisced about a lot of things, Walton 
that's gone by. Anyway, a joke that we shared, and <laughs> this is really funny. Mo had a brother named Jeffrey. He was very bright, always in the top three of the class. Whereas Mo and I, I keep telling all our friends that Mo and I was always fighting for last place. <laughs> Mo didn't like that. Mo said, Bobby, stop telling people those things, man. But it's really true. See, at the last year at school, Mo was very busy into his music. No homework. Me, I was very busy rushing to go home to go play football or whatever. No homework either. So, it's true. Well, we didn't come in last, but in the last 10 places, I guess, you'd say. So again, Mo will be sadly missed, and I'm sure he's resting peacefully now. May God bless him. May the good Lord bless and keep you Whether near or far away May you find that long-awaited golden day Today may your troubles all be small ones and your fortune ten times ten May the good Lord bless and keep you Till we meet again May you walk with the sunlight shining And a bluebird in every tree May there be a silver lining back of every cloud you see fill your dreams with sweet tomorrows never mind what might have been may the good Lord bless and keep you till we meet again may you walk with the sunlight shining and a bluebird in every tree may there be a silver lining back of every cloud you see fill your dreams with sweet tomorrows Never mind What might have been May the good Lord Bless and keep you Till we meet Again May the good Lord Bless and keep you Till we meet Again May the good Lord bless and keep you till we meet again. May the good Lord bless and keep you till we meet again. May the good Lord bless and keep you till we meet May the good Lord bless and keep you till we meet.
and there's vinegar to the teeth, and there's smoke to the eyes, so he's a sluggard to them that send him. The righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. The rich man wealth is his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. The merciful man doeth good to his soul. The desire of the righteous is of good, but the expectation of the wicked is right. Whosoever loveth instruction loveth knowledge. wise man will hear and increase learning and the man of understanding shall obtain wise counsels whosoever loveth wisdom Trusted in his own heart is a fool. The wicked flee it when no man pursue it. That which is crooked shall not be made straight. Better is a poor and wise child. There is no end of all the people, even of all that have been before them.
get this microphone on right here. Um, I just want uh, Mr. Mikey Malchung to say a few words because he flew in from Jamaica to do this gig. Say hello, Mikey.
Yes, it's on. They said it's on. Okay. Hello and welcome. And for greetings from Yad. Greetings from Yad. Yeah, Mark. <laughs> and it's a pleasure to be here with Island Head. Give a round of applause for Island Head. Good evening, Mr. Nathan. Yes.
Yes!
see it reggae music. You can't refuse it. I am the magnificent. <laughs> yeah, man, trust me. These are some of the pioneers. They gave the world this thing called reggae. Sly is a legend and a standard. Jackie Jackson, Hux. They are why we are here. When you listen to the soundtrack of the Jamaican experience, these are the names that you're gonna see. Sly and them and they're like legends on one hand, but his family to it. It isn't that they used to make this great music, it is that they are conduits of this sound. What they contributed to the music still exists within them. Ska came before, then reggae rock steady. That was the 60s. We helped create that. We were just playing it because we loved it. We felt it. And that's how we did And reggae came up when we didn't even know that it would get this big. I haven't seen them for so long. I can have a swear. You understand? Especially when we want to emphasize certain words. <laughs> back on your, back in your land. It is always good to see people like us come together to the projects because it seems like the industry needs more yeah. of that. There's nothing like musicians playing together. This is everybody now coming back which don't happen in the studio all the time. You don't have two guitar players, two keyboard players, bass man, drummer, playing together. Like a local guys, you know? Reggae music with kid man. When the harmonies, can I come in a little crescendo thing, you know? Cut and come up. No, you know, vibe man. Kingston or Star, yeah, it's gonna mash up the place. Yeah, yeah, mash up the place. <laughs> <laughs> the session them good, good, man. Good to go, man. Huh? Veterans in the house. Now I play them all from um, Toots, Pressure Drop, and Sweet and Dandy. I play these guys. Because I'm, I'm, I, do, I do those records now, so. When I play on an ox play, ba ba da ba da. You know, something coming in and there, you know. We just fit in. Well, I don't know, but the problem, the, the vibes of them get it, you feed off of them, you know. One, two, three. It's a great feeling, man. I said, once the groove is right, you just let the people have fun. You can't be too serious, you have to be fun laughing and joking. A different generation has arrived, and some of them cannot link with the past, so you have to keep on making new music, and then you check where you're coming from. They probably know that you were coming from back then to now. There will always be a place for these greats. It's all about planting the seeds. And throughout the passage of time, them plant some seeds or inspire some youths in some places. How are you playing? Bass guitar. So how long are you playing now? I play over a month now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you play reggae, you just give it that boots to start dance to it. You know? Yeah, I love reggae. Some of the youth, them are a little bit more into the foundation and you know, the legacy, more strength to them, and hopefully they'll, they'll progress and maintain what they are doing to the sense that um, they keep honest and true to it. Anything them so us do, and just try to do more than what them do. Yeah, because they already walk the road. The melody is coming back, and I hope it brings good times, because the world we live in today is a crazy world. So if the music is good, and if the old people are enhancing the young people, the young people are copying the old people, what more can I say? 
this is probably an idea whose time has come. I just can hope it cements their place in the whole history of the music. I'm ready to show them so we're still around. Don't forget to. <laughs> <laughs>
Gunja ta faya pa me kala Naitan die na di kota Batman wa rule of me here Certain man na go take them behavior Them a condom old ladies and even young babies I said that at them run the town Them a kick down them mama and lick down them papa Say no one can push them around Wicked man where Where you gonna run to Wicked man where Where you gonna hide You run to the rock It's gonna be tough You run to the sea, man, it's gonna be rough Wicked man turn Before it's too late Do you just get shot from the car? So drive by, shot at them, done, done Babylon come a curfew, we hear it They must see check, say the shot at them, I hear that They ma kick down man door face you down on the floor M16 a leak out man brain Them say where the gun they where the bad boy them they These killers they must be insane Wicked man where Where you gonna run to Wicked man where Where you gonna You run to the rock, it's gonna be tough You run to the sea, man, it's gonna be rough Wicked man turn Before it's too late Wicked man turn Before it's too late Do you just get shot from the corner? Some drive-by shot at them done that Babylon come a curfew we hear Them must see check say the shot at them a heed Them a kick down man door face you down on the floor M16 a leak out man brain Them say where the gun they where the bad man they they These killers they must be insane Wicked man way Where you gonna run to? Wicked man, where? Where you gonna hide? You run to the rock, it's gonna be tough. You run to the sea, man, it's gonna be rough. Wicked man, turn before it's too late. Every man. From the little and a grow Who sleep in a house from who sleep out a door Some turn serial killer like in a video When them come on the scene is a killing machine Wicked man turn Where you gonna run to? Wicked man where? Where you gonna You run to the rock, it's gonna be tough You run to the sea, man, it's gonna be rough Wicked man turn Before it's too late Shot a fire pa me corner Night and day in a Dakota Bad man wa rule up me here Certain man na go take them behavior Them a gone down old ladies Even young babies Say that that them run the town Them a kick down them mama Lick down them poopa Say no one push them round Wicked man where Where you gonna run to Wicked man where Where you gonna hide You run to the rock, it's gonna be tough You run to the sea, man, it's gonna be rough Wicked man turn Before it's too late You just get shot from the corner Don't drive by, shot at them, done that 
Babylon come a curfew we hear her. Me must the check say the shot of them a hit her. Them a kick down my door, face you down on the floor. Them 16 a lick out my brain. Them say where the gun they, where the bad man in there. Wicked man will, we're gonna run to. Right. 